Well, hello, Facebook friends. Welcome to another edition of CHP Talks. I'm here today with Rod Taylor, CHP leader, and Tom Lip, candidate from the Calgary area in the last election. So, Rod, why don't you go ahead and introduce Tom? Well, it's a real pr privilege and a pleasure to have Tom Lip on the call today. Uh, Tom and his wife Priscilla have hosted me a number of times when I've been in Calgary. Uh, we've met in the last couple of years and Tom and Priscilla and their family have uh, really brought a richness to our um, membership experience in, in Calgary and have been holding. Uh, Tom not only was a candidate last year in uh, Bow River, but uh, they have been holding local meetings and bringing awareness of the Christian Heritage Party, our life, family, and freedom po uh, policy and platform to the people of Calgary. So thanks, Tom, for doing that. And I'll just um, read a little bit from Tom's bio. Uh, he's been in the Bow River riding for more than 16 years. Uh, he's a graduate of York University with both bachelor's and master's degrees in business administration. Uh, he received his accounting, accounting designation, Certified Management Accountant, uh, CMA in Alberta, and he is now a chartered professional accountant. His profession is personal financial planner and advisor. And uh, of course, I know this well, Tom is a family man. He and his wife Priscilla have 10 children, wonderful children, uh, and I've enjoyed visiting with them, very mature young people. Uh, Tom's parents immigrated to Canada from communist Europe, and he witnessed their hard work, frugality, discipline, and courage as they settled in a new country. He left an oppressive state-ruled country for a land of freedom and opportunity, and that's what Canada was in the past, and that's what it should be in the future. So, uh, Tom, thanks for joining us today. We thank you for being a member of the CHP team, uh, both as a candidate and as an officer of the CHP Calgary Electoral District Association. Uh, thanks, Tom. Thanks for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here and share these times, these moments together. Thanks, Tom. Well, thank you. And uh, Rod said that you were a candidate in the last election. And I'm just, could you let our viewers know um, how you got to that point? How did you go from being a a member to getting involved in actually running as a candidate? Well, I'll give you a bit of background. It all goes back to 2016, about April, when, when Jim Enos came to Red Deer and he gave a little seminar at a, I think it was a Vietnamese restaurant. And uh, I was there with about 20 other people. And I was impressed to see a group of people that were politically, politically keen and engaged, but also spiritually had their feet on the ground and their hearts in heaven. And so I was intrigued because Jimmy and us lived in Hamilton, and my mother, who's in St. Joseph's Villa in Hamilton, has a sort of a senior's home. And, um, and so and I go there periodically. And so in October of that year, I, I went there and I – Jim Enos took me out uh, for breakfast, or, or we met, and just one of just two of us for breakfast, and I wanted to find out more. At that time, he was working with the, um, the bathroom bill at Hamilton, and he gave me some background on it, and I actually supported him a little bit as well in, in that effort. And so when I saw that here was a party that, that, had, that was spiritually uh, in tune with righteousness and politically active, and have the two coming together, I thought, well, that was great. That's really what I like to see. And we're going to need to turn this mess around that we have. Uh, human solutions are not adequate. We need, we need divine solutions. And so that one goes all the way back to 2016. And then in 2018, believe it or not, um, just through a miraculous set of events, we went from – being non-existent to getting an EDA in, in a matter, matter of about um, two months, and then um, which which was a shock to all of us. And then when the election came around, came time for the election, I was not planning to run because I wanted to coach the other folks and they're running. But then uh, Dave Hughes, um, he couldn't run for Bull River, 
and uh, Franz Vander, uh, Franz Vanderstrott, he couldn't run either. And he's just, Franz asked, well, why don't you run, Tom? Hmm. And so I, I prayed about it and uh, I, I got the same question from God, why don't you run? <laughs> I didn't have a good excuse. And then I had my wonderful wife, Priscilla, um, who an incredible encouragement, Proverbs 31 woman, par excellence. Um, she said, yeah, why don't you run? And so I said, well, okay. Um, and so because Martin Shields, the conservative MP, was supporting Bill 16, which basically uh, muzzles our freedom to, to speak the truth, um, but forces political correctness upon us, which is really forcing lies upon us. I just said, no. And then Jeffrey Park encouraged me to run too. And, and so f for various reasons, I kind of got pushed or directed in, in that direction. And right. um, I'm, we ran as hard as we could. And, and um, it was an exciting experience. The vote count wasn't great, but <laughs> the experience w was very invigorating. <laughs> Campaigns have a way of getting your adrenaline going. Yes, absolutely. And uh, and you mentioned the a previous issue campaign, uh, what we, we, we call an, an issue campaign, um, getting around a particular issue, whether it be local or national, and Jim Enos has certainly spearheaded some of these in times past, but you're getting into that next. Uh, could you tell us about what's next for Calgary? Well, about, about five months ago, in, in, in December of 2019, in Edmonton, there was a municipal bill that was kind of rammed through, and literally, literally one afternoon, wow. uh, what happened was that the city of Edmonton pushed through a bill which would make uh, conversion um, therapy uh, illegal. And, and you don't really know what that means. I've never seen those words put together, but really what it means is anyone who wants to exit or avoid the LGBTQ lifestyle and gets counseling or assistance to that end, um, the person who gives them the counseling or assistance could be fined up to $10,000. Um, and this was this came as a shock and there are people like Jojo Aruba and others faith beyond belief who tried to oppose this um but it just went through so fast in cal in, in edmonton when we in calgary heard the same thing was going to happen in january at our eda meeting uh, we were all we were all livid i mean he said what's going on here our freedoms are being taken away and so um, we went forward, and, and Rob Anders invited and suggested that what we would do is go door to door, get sign, get people to sign a petition, and then hand out a flyer or a brochure, um, telling them about what's going on. And then COVID nineteen hit us all, and we realized going door to door and get you know people won't open their doors, yeah. you know, and and so we said, well, we're going to have to do something different. And Larry Heather suggested we put together, um, rather than a, a flyer, a, a door hanger. So that's what he did. Do you want me to describe that yeah. now? Well, show, show, the, show us the door hanger. You've got it right there. Okay. So, so this, is, this is the door hanger. Um, big, bold words on the front, and then more of an explanation on the back. And it's quite sturdy paper. We've had 5,000 of these printed up. And the goal is to get them out quickly. You can pray that we, we don't have a lot of time because the printer is delays. Um, the vote's coming up in May. And get them out to, to the Calgarians. And what it says on the front, it says, number one, no ban on conversion. And then in small print underneath, it says, really, they're actually trying to ban private conversations. So in the imagine the intimacy of your private council they're saying you can't tell people certain things. And if you do, and they report on you, you're going to be uh, in financially fine. So number two, um, we're saying, um, okay, this is, this is number two here. It says, protect Calgary's freedom. That underneath, freedom of speech is essential to democracy. And number three is tell your counselor. Then in small print, 
please phone, email, or text as soon as possible. So that's designed to get their attention on, on, on the front. And then on the back, because most people are, are ignorant, they're just unaware of, of, of what is being proposed here by the, the sort of the, the anti-God uh, group. Um, really, it's, it's really bad government is what they're proposing here. I'll read the, these comments here on the back. <clears throat> the city of Calgary is proposing to ban any service to help reduce sexual behavior between persons of the same sex, falsely calling it conversion therapy. This ban would limit the private conversations a person can have with their own chosen counselor. <clears throat> It would even apply to religious conversations and make it illegal to encourage others, for example, to pray, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Even prayers could become illegal, certain prayers going in certain directions. Now, while we stand against any coercive and abusive attempts to change individual sexual orientation, we support the freedom of all people including LGBT Calgarians to make voluntary choices without interference from government in their private lives. So the intent is we want to support all Canadians, including those in the LGBTQ lifestyle, support them in the sense that if, if they want to change their lifestyle, especially if they, they want to exit the LGBTQ lifestyle or if they want to avoid it and they're getting counseling to that end, they, they're entitled to get that kind of counseling. This is a very significant attack on our freedoms as Canadians. And this came to our attention on a municipal basis in late January. Yes. And so we don't have the petition, door to door petition, but we do have these door hangers. And we have to get about 4,200 out, actually about 5,000 in total, um, yeah. out fairly, fairly soon, fairly quickly. So I'm going to just jump in here for a second and say that if you are in the Calgary area, physically in the Calgary area, please um, contact CHP so that you can help with this effort. This is an action item for those of you who are in Calgary. And I know, Rod, you want to make some more comments on the issue in total. Well, sure. This is uh, just such a big issue. And Tom, we're really grateful to you and your team for uh, taking this on, especially on such short notice. <clears throat> uh, the conversion ban, so-called uh, conversion ban, I mean, it's, it's wrong in so many ways. Uh, it's based on a faulty assumption that any attempt to help someone, even if they want the help, you know, to escape from a lifestyle that they think is, uh, you know, is not serving them well anymore, or maybe never was, but <clears throat> they want to escape from that lifestyle. And just for even a pastor or a priest to counsel with them, or even a doctor or psychiatrist, that they want to get that help, that is being classed as conversion therapy. And really, it's people who want to detransition from uh, a choice that they've made possibly as a teenager. Um, and uh, unfortunately, many you know, young people in the schools today, in the public schools particularly, are being uh, almost groomed to consider transitioning into uh, some other kind of a, a lifestyle or you know, so-called gender identity. We know that you can't actually ever change your the gender, biological gender that you were born with, um, but seems like society has uh, decided that that is a high priority, that people can choose their uh, own sexual orientation and their gender identity. And so <clears throat> a lot of damage has been done. And so what's happened is that uh, the lobbyists for the LGBTQ um, sort of agenda have gone to work in the local communities and they've they've influenced city councils in many uh, cities across the country. Uh, Edmonton and Calgary aren't the only ones, Fort McMurray, Lethbridge in fact, uh, it's hard to believe that Lethbridge would make a decision like that, but they're falling in line with political correctness. They, they don't realize what they're doing. They think that they're uh, trying to help 
people avoid some kind of abuse. And we agree that abuse of any sort is wrong, whether it's emotional, physical, um, financial, uh, you know, and there were some treatments 40, 50 years ago, including uh, electroshock and things like that, and possibly not always with the <clears throat> approval or consent of the patient. But we're talking about now a person wants help to escape from that lifestyle. And uh, if you actually help them, you could face a $10,000 fine. I mean, this is <clears throat> interfering with uh, the freedom to speak the truth, the freedom of a uh, pastor or priest to counsel in confidence with, with their uh, parishioners. Also, uh, so, the, <clears throat> so it began, the push began in uh, <clears throat> local communities but uh, the federal government, Mr. Justice, uh, Justin Trudeau and the Justice Minister David Lametti have uh, uh, put on the table Bill C-8, which would do the same thing on a federal level as what, is, what Calgary is considering on a city level, municipal level. And uh, <clears throat> the other thing that's not really clear about, you know, they're talking about conversion therapy. And it only works one way, by the way. <laughs> you know, when a school influences a young person to consider uh, taking puberty blockers, uh, hormone therapy, or even uh, gender reassignment surgery, which can never actually change them to another gender, it can only uh, change some physical characteristics. But when, when they're being influenced in that direction to, to leave the uh, uh, orientation that they were born with, the biological uh, gender they were born with, um, there, this bill does not apply to that. And that would be the actual conversion, conversion from uh, the natural state into a, an unnatural state. But it doesn't apply that way. It only applies to try and help people come the other way, but it also will affect parents whose children, possibly teenage children, having been influenced by a lot of this stuff going on in the schools and in the media, uh, and parents want to have a good, healthy discussion with their child and, and really discuss, you know, it, is this a reality or are you being pressured in this direction? <clears throat> parents will be subject to the same uh, strict guidelines as this lays out for pastors and priests. So yeah, the government is really intruding into parental rights, um, intruding into child health thing. I, I think one day there will be lawsuits about uh, young people being pressured and encouraged to to uh, do things like puberty blockers, uh, hormone therapy, and gender reassignment surgery, all of which lead to sterility and usually irreparable, uh, uh, irreversible changes to their their physical structure that that uh, they'll just never get back, especially the ability to have children. And people don't realize this. And this is <clears throat> exactly what the city of Calgary is considering. Uh, I think you said May 13th, or at least it's coming in May, a vote and a discussion on this, and the federal government. So we need people to get mobilized uh, and, and turn this back because it will affect and it will damage young people, it will damage families, and it certainly interferes with uh, freedom of speech. So, uh, Tom, we really do thank you for, you know, taking up the task there in Calgary. We can only, uh, what are they, what's the old saying, uh, think globally and act locally. So we think nationally and you're acting locally. And uh, thank you for doing that. I hope that your uh, efforts in Calgary are very successful, that you're able to touch a lot of hearts and lives, and especially those of the city councilors who up until now probably have been led along uh, with kind of a political, politically correct ideology and not really considering the potential damage to people's lives. So Tom, you please show us the, the door hanger again. And uh, if you want to make another appeal to fellow Calgarians to get involved, please do. <clears throat> Well, it's, yeah, it, if you're able to put some boots on the ground in this area the next few days, please come and help us with this distribution. Um, you know, it's not a matter of, of uh, our current prime minister has said trust in science and, and we're saying, um, well, trust in God's ways. The problem is that 
the science is is uh, that's being communicated is incomplete um, because really this is like Rod was saying this is fundamentally wrong in in the UK it's becoming Ill illegal to have any kind of surgery done on anyone under the age of 18 because they know the permanent damage you cannot violate God's design and that's, and that's the United, United Kingdom. They're not particularly known as a socially conservative uh, country, you know, yeah. but they've seen the damage and they're uh, taking steps to protect young people from making decisions yeah. that they will, yeah. they will regret. Yeah. Exactly. And, and so we, we really have to um, take action quickly on this f for the health of Canadians and for future generations in every way. Very good. Very good. Rod, do you have a final thought? Well, a couple. Uh, uh, Tom, do you have a local uh, contact, either an email uh, address there that people could reach out to you locally or, or phone number? Well, we, um, I'll just give you my email, tomalith at gmail.com. Um, my wife does monitors. We have another one called CHP Calgary Area. CHP Calgary Area at? At uh, Gmail, I think. Let me just check it out here. Yeah, okay, okay, so okay. the first one is uh, Tom A. Lip. So T O M A L I P P at gmail.com. Yep. Right. The CHP Calgary area, all one word, at gmail.com is, uh, is the Calgary area, which is, a, which is a registered EDA. If you want to donate locally, if you're uh, to Calgary as well for these types of efforts, you can do that. They have. Uh, they're a registered association, so I'll just join, put join in that with word us. For you uh, as well. Yeah, we'd love to have you as members uh, in the Calgary area or any place where you are listening to this uh, broadcast, uh, watching. We we would like to have you uh, join. Uh, when Tom and his group put together the Calgary Area Electoral District Association, that EDA stands for, um, they were able to run. I think was it six candidates in the last uh, election, Tom? That was a miracle. Yeah, so, uh, and there's room for lots more across the country. We would love to have, you know, we don't know when the ne next election will be. It's a ways off, we think. But uh, we, we would like to have people representing the Christian Heritage Party's uh, life, family, f and freedom platform in the next election. And by the way, our national website is chp.ca. Very easy to uh, find a very easy to remember and we have uh, in response to this effort in Calgary we've posted in our uh, banner at, on the front page when you get to CHPCA you will see a, a banner an article click on it it's called ban abuse not therapy so uh, we agree that abuse is terrible but therapy is good and we want every citizen of Canada to be able to access uh, sound clinical, uh, compassionate help for the concerns they have, and whether that's in gender or other issues. Uh, we, we want freedom of speech and freedom of association for doctors, pastors, priests, and, and all citizens of Canada. So chp.ca, you can find out a lot more about this topic. <clears throat> and uh, if you're in Calgary, again, please come out and uh, help Tom and his crew distribute this information. Thanks very much. Well, thank you for watching another edition of CHP Talks. Thanks again to Tom and to Rod for your contributions. And thank you all for watching. We hope to see you again next time. God bless. Thanks, Peter. Thanks, guys.